CataractCoach.com, making a trench to aid phaco chop. So this technique allows for better holding power of the nucleus. Now you can see it's a pretty dense cataract. You've got the caps regs that was made, a nice looking incision. Here comes the phaco probe. And step one is to make a bit of a trench here. So going in here, here's the side port. And here comes the chopper. And rotating the nucleus around a little bit. So this little bit of a trench is right inside the subincisional rexus. So from the subincisional rexus to about the center of the nucleus, you'll see a little bit of a groove. So there's a little bit of a groove or a pit or a trench, whatever you want to call it. Now the probe can be placed deep there and you can get the chop around the other side of the nucleus. So chopper is going to go around the lens equator. There's that deep pit. And this basically allows you to trap the nucleus between that sharp ledge there and your chopper on the other side. And now you can really put a lot more force and get a much better chop going through here. So there's the chop and look at the separation. And you can see it's a fibrous lens. This is a dense lens. And so the chop didn't propagate all the way through. That's okay. Rotate it 90 degrees. And now use the other side of that trench, again, to bury the phaco tip deeply and create this chop and try to separate it out. Now it's gonna be like a petaloid fashion here, where like petals of a flower, they're all kind of attached at the center. And that's okay, we already know what the answer is. It's chop, chop, and more chop to be patient. Again, burying the phaco tip in there, or making a little bit more of a groove if you need to, but really trying to get these pieces separated. As you know, the challenge here is that posterior plate. So again, coming in on that side of that trench and then there, look at the amount of force you can put. If you're only using vacuum holding power, you really can't exert the same amount of force because what can you do? Four or five, maybe 600 millimeters of mercury holding power. But here you actually physically trapped the nucleus or part of the nucleus between the two instruments. So you can exert a lot more mechanical force here. So now going in there with a phaco probe, you can see the pieces can come out pretty easily and there's very good separation there. Now you can sub-chop them as well, but again, that fibrous nature means kind of difficult to fully get the pieces separated, and you may need multiple attempts at the chop. So be persistent. But beautiful technique here. I really uh, enjoy watching this video. And now guess what we're gonna do? Come on, we all know it. Recoat the endothelium with the viscoelastic, a dispersive agent here going inside. Good recoat of the endothelium. Look at that, beautiful. Now, the remainder of the nucleus, the other half, can be removed. So again, this is the trench chop. Now, there are very similar variations, you know, the pit chop and the pit technique, the submarine chop that we learned from Mohanta. There are all kinds of great techniques here. The, the, the bottom line is about the same, which is you're going to use more mechanical forces to separate the nucleus or to, to chop it into pieces. And the mechanical forces mean you're actually physically trapping the nucleus between two instruments so you can exert more pressure instead of just relying on phaco vacuum holding power. Here comes the epinuclear shell. Just get that to flip over on itself and get that thing out of the eye. Look at that. Beautiful. Wow, what a neat case here. Let's finish watching up this case here. Let's see what we're going to get at the end here. I didn't show you the very beginning of the case where we did the rexus. The rexus was actually, it looks so beautiful and perfect. It was actually a manual rexus. So it didn't use forceps there. There you go. I like that technique too, using a little a cotton tip there just to uh, prevent the AC from deflating. And now going in here with the IA probe, coaxial IA probe, not a whole lot of cortex left, but a little bit. And then get the lens in. By the way, everything else looks great. Hey, check out our teaching website, cataractcoach.com. I know you love the videos on YouTube, but if you leave YouTube for a second, you can actually learn a whole lot more, and it's all free. Check it out, especially that book. Now, here we go. Viscolas is going in, filling up that capsule bag. And there's a little bit of staining there of the capsule. That can happen. Now, that's no big deal. That can happen with these really opaque cataracts and dense cataracts. Our lens looks like a single piece of acrylic lens going in the capsule bag, nice and easy. Get that delivered in and finish up the case here. So, all right, beautifully done. I like everything about this case. I like the technique, I like the incisions, I like the draping, I like the iron primary, I like the rexus, I like the technique. I even like, look at this, sealing up the incision at the end here. Nicely done, here's the IA probe. And going behind the optic, remove viscoelastic. I'm loving this case. This case is fantastic. Beautiful job.
Doctor, thank you for submitting that video. And I hope you remember to check out cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. And remember, I got a new podcast every single week. The podcast where we talk to a surgeon for about an hour and we learn so much great insight, things that will improve your practice of medicine. I promise you. Check it out.